The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to today's Chemistry Ordinary Level Revision Session. I am Wanto Derek, your teacher. Today, we are going to carry out chemistry revision for GCE ordinary level. The GCE ordinary level chemistry syllabus has 14 topics, which have been regrouped into five phases as follows. Phase one, matter, properties, and transformation, which have as topics, atomic structure, and the periodic table, bonding and structure, and states of matter. Phase two, energy has as topics, chemical formulae and equations, the mole concept, rates of reaction and reversible reactions, electrochemistry and energetics. Phase three, matter, Environmental education has as topics, organic chemistry, chemistry and society. Phase four has energy. Environmental education has as topics, action of heat on substances, action of electricity on materials, air and water. And phase five, matter, properties and transformation has as topic chemistry of elements. Chemistry ordinary examination session has two papers. Paper one, one hour and 30 minutes. Paper two, two hours, 30 minutes. Let's look at paper one. Duration for paper one is one hour, 30 minutes. And paper one has as objectives to test the candidate's ability to recognize, recall, explain, and interpret specific chemical facts and to apply chemical knowledge. This paper has 50 multiple choice questions that cover the entire syllabus. Each question has four suggested answers with only one correct answer for one mark. Paper two has three sections, section A, B, and C. And duration for paper two is two hours, 30 minutes. Section A has as objectives to test the candidate's ability to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of chemistry. Apply the knowledge required to analyze chemical data. This section has 
five structural questions, all compulsory, each carrying 10 marks, candidates accredited on the best four attempted questions. Section B has as objectives to test the candidate's ability to observe, interpret, analyze, and draw conclusions from experimental setups and data, and to describe, explain, and comment on experimental setups, techniques, and procedure. This section is made up of two compulsory questions, each carrying 20 marks. Section C has as objectives to test the candidate's ability to organize material and present ideas in clear and logical forms and to handle patterns and show critical and imaginative ability of chemical knowledge. This section has three essay questions to answer to each carrying 20 marks. As for examination waiting, knowledge is 30%, comprehension 40%, application 30%, analysis and evaluation 10%. And for the paper waiting, paper one carries 40% of the examination and paper two carries 60% of the examination. We have just seen the structure of the examination and we are going to stay connected for phase one, which has as topics, atomic structure and the periodic table, bonding and structure and state of matter. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, Learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. and UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Nanova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Phase one has as topics atomic structure and the periodic table, bonding and structure, and lastly, states of matter. Atomic structure and the periodic table. We are going to revise some important notions under the topic atomic structure and the periodic table beginning with definitions chemistry chemistry is the science subject which deals with the structure composition properties and changes that matter undergoes matter matter is anything that has mass and occupy space the states of matter are solid, 
liquid and gas. Atom. Atom is defined as the smallest particle of an element that takes part in a chemical reaction. It has subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atomic number represented as Z. Atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, which is equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. Mass number. Mass number is defined as the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons in an atom. Notation of an atom. For the atom of an element, X, represented as X subscript Z superscript A, where Z is the atomic number and A is the mass number. Isotopy. Isotopy is the phenomenon whereby atoms of the same element have same atomic number, that is number of protons, but different mass numbers due to difference in the numbers of neutrons. The various forms are called isotopes. Example, we have carbon-12 and carbon-14. Electronic configuration. Electronic configuration is the arrangement of electrons on the various shells or energy levels in an atom. The atom of an element are made up of three subatomic particles. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. The proton has mass one, it has a charge of plus one, and it is located in the nucleus. And it has as function determine position of an element on the periodic table. The neutron has mass of one, the charge is zero, it is located in the nucleus, and the function of the nucleus of the neutron it contributes to the mass of an atom. And we have electrons or the electron. It has a mass of one divided by 1840. At times we say it is negligible, and it has a charge of minus one, and it is located on the shells or orbits of an atom. And the electrons determine the chemical properties of the of an element. The two parts of an atom are the nucleus which contains the protons and the neutrons and the shells which electrons occupy. An atom is electrically neutral. Hence, number of protons in an atom equals number of electrons. In the modern periodic table, elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. It is divided into eight vertical columns called groups and seven horizontal rows called periods. Then the number of electrons in the outermost shell determine the group to which an element belongs, and the number of shells occupied by electrons tell us the period to which this element belongs. Some groups have special or family names. For example, group one are called alkali metals. Group two are called alkaline F metals. Group seven are called halogens. And group eight are called noble gases or inert gases. In between groups, Two and three, we have a series of metals which are called transition metals. Structure and bonding.
elements form chemical bonds to attain a stable noble gas electronic structure. Chemical bond is an electrostatic force of attraction that holds atoms, ions, or molecules together. And how is the chemical bond formed? By the loss and gain of electrons or by sharing of electrons. Types of chemical bonds. Firstly, ionic or electrovalent bonding. It involves the complete transfer of valence electrons from a metal to a known metal. The electrostatic attraction between the positively charged metal ion and the negatively charged non-metal ion constitute the ionic bond. For example, formation of sodium chloride. The sodium atom has one electron in its outermost shell, which is being transferred to the outermost shell of chlorine, which have seven electrons. The sodium becomes positively charged and carries a plus one charge and have a stable electronic configuration of 2,8, while the chlorine atom gains an electron and a chloride ion is formed with a minus one charge and has a stable electronic configuration of 2,8,8. Therefore, the electrostatic attraction between the positive sodium ion and the negative chloride ion constitute what is called the ionic bond. Covalent bonding. Covalent bonding involves the sharing of electrons between non-metal atoms. Each atom may contribute to the shared pair of electrons. That is ordinary covalent bond or one atom having a lone pair of electrons donates both electrons in the shared pair, dative covalent bond. Molecules are formed and the normal covalent bond cannot be distinguished from the dative bond. Covalent bond is the electrostatic attract or the electrostatic force of attraction between the shared pair or pairs of electrons and the positive atomic nuclei. Example, we have formation of chlorine molecule, simple covalent bond. The chlorine atom has seven electrons in its outermost shell and the formation of chlorine molecule brings together two chlorine atoms which have seven electrons in the outermost shell and they are going to share a pair of electrons. And each participating atom brings an equal number of electrons for sharing. So the first chlorine atom brings one and the second chlorine atom brings one and they have a stable electronic configuration of two, eight, eight. Dative covalent bond. Example, formation of ammonium ion. It is formed between ammonia that has one lone pair of electrons and three shared pair of electrons and a hydrogen ion having no electrons. The lone pair of electron on nitrogen in ammonia is being donated for sharing with the hydrogen ion and we have the formation of ammonium ion. In ammonium ion, we have one lone pair of electrons donated by ammonia, three ordinary covalent bonds, and one dative covalent bond. Metallic bonding occurs only in metals. It is the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged metal atomic nuclei and the C of free mobile electrons, also called delocalized electrons. 
intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are electrostatic forces of attraction occurring between molecules. There are two types, hydrogen bonding and van der Waals forces. Gaseous state. Matter is anything that has mass and occupy space. And we have states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Here we are going to see the intermolecular forces present in a solid, liquid, and a gas. For a solid, intermolecular force, very strong, the shape, solids, they have a definite shape, and they have a definite volume. Liquid, intermolecular force in between liquid molecules, weak, shape, not definite, takes the shape of the container, and the volume is definite. For a gas, intermolecular force, very weak, the shape, not definite, volume, not definite. Change of state, always accompanied by change in energy. So let's look at some phase transformation. And how do we call such phase transformation and some examples? Change of state is brought by change in temperature, that is heating or cooling. For example, phase transformation from a solid state to a liquid state is called melting or fusion. Example, melting of snow or melting of ice. Phase transformation from the solid state to the gaseous state is known as sublimation. Example, the sublimation of iodine. And phase transformation from the liquid state to the solid state is known as freezing or solidification. That is freezing of ice. We have other state phase transformation like from, the, from gas to liquid, liquid to gas, and gas to solid. And each of these phase transformation have special names. Kinetic theory of matter. The kinetic theory of matter states, matter is made up of tiny particles that are continually moving and so possess kinetic energy. This theory is exhibited in Brownian motion, diffusion, and osmosis. Gas laws. We are going to look at two of these laws. Boyce law. Boyce law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure, provided temperature remains constant. So, P multiplied by V is equal to A constant, where V is volume at pressure P and K is a mathematical constant. Charles's law. Charles's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided the pressure remains constant. So, V on T is equal to a constant K, where V is equal to the volume T, Kelvin temperature, and K, mathematical constant. Temperature conversion. To convert temperature in degrees Celsius to temperature in Kelvin at 273 to the former, and to convert a Kelvin temperature to a Celsius temperature, subtract 273, 273 from the former, the combined gas equation. Putting together Boyce's law and Charles's law, we have the combined gas law. The relationship between the three variables, that is volume, temperature and pressure can be summed up as follows. P multiplied by V on T is equal to A 
constant. And we know P is pressure, V is the volume, T is the temperature, and K is the mathematical constant. We have come to the end of our phase one, a revision phase one. Stay connected for revision questions. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Nanova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Revision questions. We are going to begin with multiple choice questions. We have asked question one. Why is the atom of an element electrically neutral? Option A, the atom has no charge. Option B, the neutrons neutralizes the protons. C, the atom has no effect on electricity. D, the number of protons and electrons are equal. Going back to our explanation, we get the charge of a proton as plus positive and the charge of an electron as positive. We all know that an equal number of, or an equal magnitude of a positive charge with an equal magnitude of a negative charge, our answer is, zero it neutralizes or it cancels out so for an atom to be electrically neutral meaning that an atom carries no charge the number of protons should be equal to the number of electrons so our answer is d the numbers of protons and electrons are equal question two which pair will attract each other? Which pair will attract each other? We know like charges repel, unlike charges, they attract. Subatomic particles, protons positively charged, neutrons no charge, electrons negatively charged. Therefore, the proton that is positively charged attracts the electron that is, that is, the proton that is positively charged attracts electrons that is negatively charged. So our answer is C, electrons and protons attract each other. Question number three, the atom of an element has 11 protons, 11 electrons and 12 neutrons the mass number of the element is a 22 b 11 c 23 d 12. 
The definition of mass number goes thus. Mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons found in the nucleus of one atom of an element. So we are going to take the number of protons, which is 11, plus the number of neutrons, which is 12, and we have a, as answer C, 23. Question four. Which statement is not true about isotopes of the same element? A, they have the same mass number. B, they have the same atomic number. C, they have the same proton number. D, they have the same number of electrons. Stress, not true. From the definition of isotopy, it states, isotopes are atoms of the same element having the same atomic number, but different mass number. So our answer is A, they have the same mass number. In our definition, we use the word bird. So mass numbers are different. Atomic numbers, the same answer is A. They have the same mass number. Not true of isotopes. Question five. An element has two types of atoms with masses 35 and 37 and relative abundance 0.75 and 0.25 respectively. The relative atomic mass of this element is, the relative atomic mass of this element is, so we are going to go on the board and do this calculation. So we have the RAM relative atomic mass. We are going to take the relative abundance of the first element that is 0.75, I multiply by the mass, which is 35, plus I take the second mass or the second relative abundance, which is 0.25. I multiply by the mass, which is 37. And when we do this arithmetic, we have as answer 35.5. So our answer is D, 35.5. Question six, an atom of an element X, X is not the actual symbol of the element, has mass number 56 and atomic number 26. Will have mass number, it has a mass number of 56, atomic number 26 will have a, 26 protons and 26 and 56 neutrons. B, 26 electrons and 30 neutrons. C, 26 protons and 26 neutrons. D, 30 protons and 30 electrons. So from our question, we know the definition of atomic number. Atomic number is the number of protons found in the nucleus of one atom of an element. And the mass number is the sum of protons plus the neutrons. So to get a number of neutrons, we take mass number minus number of protons. And to know, when we know atomic number, obviously we know number of protons. So our answer is B, it has 26 electrons, and 30 neutrons because for an electrically neutral atom number of protons is equal to number of electrons seven the fundamental particles that make up an element are the fundamental particles that make up an element are we have a atoms ions and molecules b atoms cations and anions C, protons, neutrons, and electrons. D, metals, non-metals, and metalloids. 
We have answer, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Eight. According to Boyle's law, which of the following statement is correct? Boyle's law, which of the following statement is correct? A, temperature is constant. B, the volume is constant. C, the pressure is constant. D, the volume varies with temperature. Boyle's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure, provided temperature remains constant. Therefore, our answer is A, the temperature is constant. Question nine. Under conditions of fixed temperature and amount of gas, Boyle's law requires that P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. P1 equal a constant. P1 on P2 is equal to V2 on P2. For Boyle's law, we know that P1 or PV is equal to a constant. Therefore, P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. So, answer to our question is 1 and 2 are correct. Question 10. If the volume of a given mass of gas at 0 degrees Celsius is 43 cm cube, what will the volume of the gas at 30 degrees Celsius at constant pressure. Constant pressure. Charles's law. And we know Charles's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature, provided pressure remains constant. So, V on T is equal to a constant. V1 on T1 is equal to V2 on T2. Absolute temperature. So we need to convert our temperatures to Kelvin. And we said temperatures to convert Celsius temperature to Kelvin temperature, we add 273 to the formula. So T1 is equal to zero degrees Celsius plus 273. It gives us 273. And T2 is equal to 30 degrees Celsius plus 273. It gives us 300 Kelvin. Now, we are looking for what will be the volume of the gas at 30 degrees Celsius? V2, we now make V2 the subject. This implies V2 is equal to V1 T2 on T1. We fit in our values V1, 43 centimeters cubed, multiplied by T2. 300 Kelvin divided by T1, which is 273 Kelvin. Kelvin cancels Kelvin, and we have as answer 47.3 centimeters cubed for the volume at 30 degrees Celsius. A sample of nitrogen occupies, that's question 11, a sample of nitrogen occupies a volume of 1 dm cube at 500 Kelvin uh, and 1.01 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter square. What will be its volume at 2.02 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter square? Temperature is constant. So we are under Boy's law. And Boy's law states volume inversely proportional to pressure provided temperature remain constant. So when you use the expression P1, V1 equal to P2, V2, 
P1, D1 equal to P2, V2. And we are looking for V2. So V2 is equal to P1, V1 on P2. Substituting values for P1, V1, and P2, we have as answer 0 0.5 dm cube. Now we are going to move to structural question, revision questions, structural. Question number one. The table below gives information about the elements lettered A to E, which are not the usual symbols of the elements. Study this table and answer the questions below. Question A, give the electronic structure of the elements A and A and C. What are the family names of the elements B and D? Which of the elements cannot form compounds? Explain why. Write the atomic number of B and D. Give the formula of the compounds formed between A and E. What type of bonding is formed between these compounds? And the third question under E, give one important use of the element A. Solution to the first question. We have the table. They say give the electronic structure of the elements A and C. We have for A, 2, 8, 7, and for C, 2, 8, 8. The atomic number of A is 17, and the atomic number for C is 20. So we are going to distribute the electrons into the various energy levels. We have the KHL, L, and N. We may go up to the N. Now, since A has atomic number 17, it has 17 protons and 17 electrons. So we say electrons are found in the shells of the orbit. The K shell can take a maximum of two electrons. So we give two electrons to the K shell. The L shell can take a maximum of eight. We give eight. When I sum these two, two plus eight, we have 10. We have seven electrons that are left. We now give to the M shell. So the electronic configuration of A is 2, 8, 7. Likewise for C, which is 2, 8, 8. And we can even go further and write the electronic configuration for E, which is 2, 8, 2. What are the family names of the elements B and D? B and D. B is alkali at metals and D noble or inert gases because they have eight electrons in the outermost shell. Next question is which of the elements cannot form compounds? Explain why. Which of the elements cannot form compounds? We all know elements that are found in group eight are called noble gases, or we call them inner. Inner means unreactive. Why are they unreactive? They have a stable electronic configuration, or the outermost shell is filled with eight electrons. Let's take, for example, D, atomic number 18. We write its electronic configuration is two, eight, eight. Eight electrons in the outermost shell. So D falls in group eight. It is 
in an unreactive. So our answer is D. This is because they have a stable uptake of electrons, or the outermost shell is completely filled with electrons. Write the atomic number of D, of B, and D. Atomic number of B and D. B has as electronic configuration two is to eight, is to eight, is to one. To get the atomic number, we just need to sum the, the number of electrons in the various energy levels. And since in an electrically neutral atom, protons and electrons are the same. So when I sum two plus eight plus eight plus one, I have 19. And for D, when I sum two plus eight plus eight, I have 18. So the atomic number of B is 19. Atomic number of D, 18. Give the formula of the compound forms between A and E. Between A and E. We have as follows. The two elements involved, we have A and we have E. We bring out their valences. A has as valency one, found in group one. E has as valency one. We now do exchange of valences. We have as formula of the compound A, E, as formula of the compound. Next question, what type of bonding is formed between these compounds? E is a non-metal, sorry, E is a metal and A is a non-metal. And the complete transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal results in the formation of, of, of an ionic compound. So in an ionic compound, the type of bonding present is ionic or electrovalent bond. Give one important use of the compound A. A, it is used as a liquid coolant in nuclear reactors, in street lamps, to make petrol additive, and in the reduction of tin to chloride in titanium. Question two, define matter. State the kinetic theory of matter. State Boyce and Charles's law. D, 375 cm cube of a gas has a pressure of 770 millimeters of mercury. What will what volume will the gas occupy if the pressure is reduced to 750 millimeters of mercury at the same temperature? E, convert the following Celsius temperature to Kelvin temperatures. F, convert the following Kelvin temperatures to Celsius temperatures. And G, at 17 degrees Celsius, a sample of hydrogen occupies 125 cm cube, what will be the volume at 100 degrees Celsius if the pressure remains constant? Definition of matter. Matter is anything that has mass and occupy space. State the kinetic theory of matter. It states, Matter is made up of tiny particles that are continually moving and so possess kinetic energy. State Boyce and Charles's law. Boyce's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure, provided temperature remains constant. And the Charles's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided pressure remains constant. Next question. At 
375 centimeters cube. A gas has a pressure of 770 millimeters of mercury. Find its volume if the pressure is reduced to 750 millimeters of mercury at the same temperature. Firstly, we have to take down our data. That is initial pressure, 770 millimeters of mercury. Final pressure, 750 millimeters of mercury. Initial volume, that's V1, 375 centimeters cube. What we are looking for is V2. Yeah, temperature is constant. Boy's law. We know P1, V1, equal to P2, V2. We now make V2 the subject. V2 is equal to, V2 is equal to P1, V1 on P2. Substituting values we have as answer, 385 cm cube. Convert the following Celsius temperature to Kelvin temperature. We use as formula to convert, we say we add 273 to the formula. So we just add 273 to 148 C degree Celsius and we'll have 421 Kelvin. We do same for the others at zero degree Celsius and at minus 132 degree Celsius. Convert the following Kelvin temperature to Celsius temperature. You see, we subtract 273 from the former. So we use, for the first one, we subtract 273 from 125. We have as answer negative 148 degree Celsius. Likewise, for the others, that's Roman 2 and Roman 3. Next question is, at 17 degrees Celsius, a sample of hydrogen gas occupies 125 cm3. What will be the volume at 100 degrees Celsius if the pressure remains constant? Bringing out data, volume V1 equal 125 cm3. V2, we don't know that's why we are to calculate. T1, looking at the question, temperature is in degrees Celsius, so we need to convert our temperature to Kelvin. So we add 273 to 17 degrees Celsius, we have 290 Kelvin. And to 100, we have 375 Kelvin. Pressure constant, Boyce law, V1 on T1, is equal to V2 on T2. Making V2 the subject, we have V1, V1 T2 on T1. Substituting values, we have V2, that is the final volume, to be 161 cm cube. And the last question, in the incomplete periodic table below, some of the elements are represented by letters as shown. The letters are not the usual symbol of the elements. Using only the letters, answer the question, answer the following questions. Select from the letters. One, whose atom loses electrons readily? Whose atom accepts electrons most readily? That is a gas with that atomic molecule at room temperature and pressure. Whose atoms are most stable and unreactive? Write the molecular formula of the compound formed by the elements M and L, G and L, A and L. The element M reacts with water. What do you observe when A reacts with water? Write a balance equation for the reaction. For the first question, looking at the, tape, the incomplete periodic table, the element whose atom loses electrons most readily. We know elements that are present in group one or are found in group one, they have just one electrons in the outermost shell. So they easily give off these electrons. So we have as answer M because it is found in group one or it is an alkali metal. Whose atom accepts electrons most readily? Most readily we have 
elements in group seven, that is the halogens. They accept electrons most readily to have a stable electronic configuration, that is L. Next question, that is a gas with diatomic molecules at room temperature. We have elements in group seven again, they are diatomic in nature, so L. It's so whose atoms are most stable and unreactive. Unreactive inert gases. Elements in group eight. Inert gases we have as answer E. Now we have to write the molecular formula of the compound formed by the elements M and N and L. We have seen M is in group one, valency one. L is in group seven, valency seven. So when we have exchange of valency, we have M, L as the formula of the compound form between M and L. We are going to do likewise for G and L. G is in group three, L is in group one. Exchange of valency, we have G, L, three. And for A and L, A is in group two, L is in group one. Exchange of valencies, we have A, L. The element M reacts with water. What do you observe when M reacts with water? M is in group one. They react with the element dates on water on the surface and melts into a silvery ball. Effervescence occurs and the resulting solution turns moist red litmus paper blue and heat is released. We are asked to write a balance equation to show the reaction between M and water. So we see that two moles of M reacts with two moles of water to give two moles of MOH. That is an alkali solution is formed, MOH, and hydrogen gas is given off. That's why we observe bubbles of gas. We have come to the end of phase one of our old level revision class. Our next revision lesson will be on the principles of chemistry. See you in the next revision lesson.